And what happened there that night? When you were there, what happened to you? I was, yeah, I was on a, yeah, a three-day weekend for school, so my mom just thought it was a good a good idea to go to a, um, a concert. And so we saw what was in town. We went. Uh, um, about a couple hours later, gunshots broke out. We thought it was fireworks because somebody was celebrating their birthday, I thought. But um, when it started to escalate, people started running past us, and then the gunshots started firing again. And that's when we started actually freaking out, because when everybody started running, you see pe people falling, getting shot. When I started running, about maybe three minutes after I started running, I was shot in the shoulder. You know, um, and then as soon as I was shot in the shoulder, I fell to the ground, tried to get back up. My mom carried me over her shoulders. And, uh, um, and then while I was doing that, I looked up to see what was going on. And I see somebody get shot in their face right next to me. It was probably the most gruesome thing ever. Wow. And you can hear the shots creeping up on you. It's like it's like bullets just creeping up on you. You hear, do, 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 like they get louder as they come. Mm -hmm. And it was just probably the scariest thing ever. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that that's horrific. And I know a lot of people, you know, are having bad dreams and just, you know, hard to sleep and all. I'm sure it probably, from what you saw especially, I'm sure it must be affecting you in that way, unfortunately, huh? Yeah, and I've had a, a few bad dreams about the, it's like a flashback type of dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 just a crazy thing that happened. So did you feel like the bullets were, um, I mean, do, do you feel like there's more than one shooter or just one shooter? Or could you tell where the bullets might be coming from? What? It, it sounded like two shooters, because, but I'm pretty sure that was the echo, which it was the echo. Mm -hmm. And so, because um, uh, uh, guns echo when they're from far away. And so, um... And then, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there was just one shooter, which there was just one shooter. And uh, um, I, I actually saw the muzzle flash in the Mandalay Bay. Wow. I was shot. I was laying down on the ground. And then I heard a uh, um, officer run past me, and I heard, you're the shooter at Mandalay Bay over the, ra over the radio. So I looked up. I see two broken out windows, and I see gun uh, flashes coming down at me. And I was like, i got to get farther than this. But the way we were running... We were running towards the shooter. We were running to the wrong exit towards the shooter. So that's how, probably how more people got injured because it was if he was able to shoot closer. But then, so we all had to run all the way back across the concert and go out to the east exit. And then when I got hit, it, it felt like a hundred mile per hour baseball just hitting my shoulder, and it was just constant pain. And that, like my adrenaline was running so bad, I couldn't feel it, but I could feel it. And then when I got into the hospital, when I started to calm down. And that's when they um, put me in the tra trauma center because I lost like 50% of my body blood. Wow. What, what, in the hospital for four days. what hospital did you go to out there? What? I have no clue because that was my first time being in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Yeah. And you were with your mom, you said? It was some sort of, some sort of emergency hospital. And they, I know they were getting people in and out of those hospitals pretty quick because they had so many victims. How long were you in there about? Uh, I was in there for three days. Because mine was a three and two shot, so I had to get surgery. Oh. I lost a lot of blood. Oh, okay. Did they leave the bullet in there or take it out? They took it out the day after mm -hmm. because, uh, um, like, they had so many people to deal with. They couldn't deal with just me. They just sit, they just patched me up so I would stop losing blood, and then they came to me the next day. Oh, okay, I see, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that was a painful, I mean, um, because, you know, taking, the, especially, I guess, since you took the impact of the bullet in the shoulder area, you know, that the force of the bullet hitting your body, it was just, yeah, it was it was quite painful, it, I'm sure. It stung, it burned, it was like all of the above pains happening at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense, because that's, that's what I hear everybody says. Sometimes, um, depending on, you know, what area of the body you're shot in, a lot of times, they say it, it definitely is the first thing, one of the first things you feel like a burn. But yours probably, since it hit the shoulder, you, you're getting that impact, that, that, in, that impact, you know, if it hit bone tissue or something, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, but I, I felt it go into my body and I felt it come out. It felt like a little pellet just having fun in my body. Yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. And you were shot with just one bullet or more than one? Uh, I was shot with one. One, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's a horrific thing to have to go through, and so many people did, and there's so many questions that are unanswered, you know, in regards to it. I've had a few other people that, you know, that were uh, shot victims in that area, and um, what, did you, did you drop anything, like a cell phone or any personal items? Did you all lose anything? Yes, I did, and then uh, um, while I was in the hospital, my mom had to go back and get my phone, 
it took her in about an hour to um, try and go back and my phone. At first, they wouldn't let her in, but um, at first, they wouldn't let her into the crime scene because it was like one of the hugest crime scenes in the world. And um, so they didn't know if she could have been the second shooter or something like that. Right. They were really sketched out. But then uh, um, they, she wasn't the one that actually found my phone. They actually had about three or four officers go and find it. She explained um, what it looked like and what kind of phone it was. And so then they found it in the middle of the uh, concert floor. Yeah, you were fortunate there that she went back and got it soon because those that left it overnight, the FBI eventually got a hold of those personal items and a lot of the phones in, uh, that they got back were removed. All the pictures and the video and all that was yeah. removed. So it was odd. Yeah, all the videos were um, from the shooting because I, when I was in the hospital, I, when I started to see it on the news, and I was like, wow, somebody was actually shooting. And, then, uh, um, and, and I didn't know it was from the hotel. I thought it was in the concert. So that's what made me even more scared. I was like, there's no way out. This dude can be spraying bullets everywhere into 22,000 people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, when I got shot, I was like, holy crap, I need to get out of here. And then my mom, I fell to the ground. My mom carried me over her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I was like, this is serious stuff right here. Yeah, absolutely. It's very fortunate that your mom was able to carry you <laughs> to a safer place and then eventually get you to the hospital. Cause, uh, yeah, you know, I'm 230 pounds, and she has arthritis in her back, and I was like, Mom, you're amazing. <laughs> well, that is incredible. What happened probably in that situation is, is the adrenaline. When the adrenaline kicks in, you'll get super strength. I've heard cases yeah. where, where un, uh, accidents happen, somebody will be working under a vehicle, and, uh, and the person's not that big and strong of a person, but that adrenaline kicks in, the brain it kicks in, and they realize that it's a life or death situation, a fight or flight. And, they, and some people get just some incredible powers when that happens. And, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, so you go to school out in, in that area. Yeah, I have to go to school with, uh, um, with a uh, cast on my shoulder. Wow, that's incredible. The thing that lifts up your arm, that stays on your head, but I have to go to school for that, and I'm still on it as we speak. Mm-hmm. And, um... When you were out there, what else did you see? Any un anything unusual? Anything? I know it's when it happened. I mean, you're just trying to get to safety, obviously, as quickly as possible. But it's incredible that you were able to see the muzzle flash. That's that. That's quite interesting indeed. Yeah, because I just, I just looked up to see what I could see, and the first thing I saw was something flashing, and it looked pretty high up, and I was like, that's got to mm -hmm. be where it's coming from. And then when I told my mom, I was like, Mom, we're too close. We're going the wrong way. And I heard a whole bunch of other people say, we got to go east. we got to go mm -hmm. east. Yeah, because that was what another unfortunate thing is a lot of people were just running in different directions, not knowing which way to go, because they didn't know if it was a shooter on the ground or one up high. Or, exactly, or, because there were, there were probably like five entrances, and people didn't know if, it was, if he was on the ground or in the sky, coming out of the helicopter, and they didn't know. Right, exactly, and that's another question, too, because some people still believe, of course, that some of the shooting came from the helicopters. And I have to admit, I've seen some videos where it looks like muzzle flash coming from the door air of these helicopters, but, you know, it's just hard to tell, really. Yeah, I haven't seen that video, but I might look into it. Mm-hmm. And, um... It kind of looked like a police helicopter, um... Because like, I did see a helicopter, but I, I didn't think it was coming from there, because I, I saw the um, police on the next, next to it, but I didn't really, like... I didn't think that could have been where it was coming from. So when you saw that muzzle flash, did it look like it was, you said it was up in a high air, probably about, you would say it probably around the 32nd floor up there, the top part? Yeah, probably, probably right at the 32nd floor is what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, wow. And so most of the people in that area uh, were, like you, I guess, were just thinking it was fireworks or something going on when it first started, huh? Yeah, because like the, first, the first round of shots is probably like 50 shots. And then uh, um, it, started, it just sounded like fireworks, so everybody wasn't um, really freaking out about it. Then when uh, Jason ran off the stage, that's when it kind of got a little confusing. Because right. he literally bolted off the stage. And we were like, why is he freaking out over fireworks? We literally looked at my mom and we were like, why is he freaking out over fireworks? And so then uh, um, we saw people start running. Uh, um, we started to get confused, so we just stayed there because we didn't know what was happening. And then, a, like, a horde of people just came our way. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started running, and we didn't know what was happening. And then, and then the second round of shots came. That's when I got shot. I got shot while I was running. And oh, okay. I fell to the ground. My mom picked me up by my legs, threw me over her shoulder, and just started running. And then we found some dude's truck, and uh, um, we asked the dude if he'd take me to the hospital. 
and I, like there was blood all over my clothes. Like we're still, as we speak, we're still trying to get those uh, the blood out of my clothes. And uh, um, then when we found the truck, he, I was thrown in the trunk, and uh, uh, so he was being to the hospital. I mean, he was at least going 100. So I was able to get there fast enough before I was able, before I lost too much blood. Yeah, yeah, cuz you know, bleed out you could have died. It's very fortunate. I'm glad you made it. That's a it's, it's a crazy situation. But that seems to be the case for a lot of the victims. Uh, fortunately, there were people with trucks and vehicles that knew people need to get to the hospital quick and they didn't have enough ambulances and they weren't there. So fortunately, it just these are hero people that that did that, you know, that that went there and and were able to get everyone and, you know, get them to the hospital. Yeah, and some of them were police trucks. So, uh, um, oh, okay. There was probably, uh, there was, uh, there was like 20 ambulances, but I was like, there's no way 20 ambulances is going to help all these people. And so I was like, you know, why are all these ambulances here? There's barely anybody shot. But when, as the shots kept ringing out, I heard screaming and everything, and I heard, I'm hit, I'm hit. Mm -hmm. And I heard uh, um, people screaming, help, help. And I, I wanted to help them, but I was shot. Right. If I was a shot, I would have gone over there and helped them, and helped them, because my mom's also a nurse up here in Atlanta. Oh, okay. So she would have helped them easily. She could have saved their life, but she was more worried about her son's life. Right. Exactly. I understand that. Certainly understand. And you sound like a pretty big, strong guy. So yeah, I'm sure you could have helped quite a few of them out there. You know. Yeah, I'm 230 pounds. So that's, this shouldn't have happened to me. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's just wild, so wild and, and bizarre. And your mom's okay? Um, you talk with her, she's okay with putting this on YouTube? Uh, yeah, but she doesn't want to be talked to just because uh, um, it's uh, uh, for her job. She, she she had, like, one of the strict jobs. Like, she can't even tell me what happens inside the um, hospital when I ask, so she probably wouldn't want to talk. Yeah, no, I understand she, that. Yeah, she said it's okay with me. I told her that, I was, like, when I was on the phone with you yesterday, mm -hmm. um, but she said uh, uh, that that's fine, you can call them tomorrow. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure that she follows my channel or she knows about my channel? Uh, no, but I'll tell her to. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So you follow it then, yeah. Um, yeah. You probably, I imagine, started after you saw the shooting, probably found one of the videos, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, that's... Um, um, breaking news type of videos mm -hmm. on on YouTube because I like to watch YouTube on my um, phone, so I had to use my mom's phone because uh, she went out looking for mine, and so uh, uh, my, my uncle was with her at the same time. But my uncle, he just lives in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. but he was staying at that like pyramid hotel where the shooter happened next when the shooting was happening mm -hmm. um, next to him, and so he was staying at one of the um, pyramid hotels for uh, work. Oh, okay, and then. And so, uh, um, I was watching YouTube on, on her phone, and it said, breaking news, Las Vegas shooting. I was like, I gotta watch this, because this is where I was at. Mm -hmm. It said, like, two people dead, 20 injured, and I was like, wow. And so then I went and looked on some uh, videos, YouTube videos, to see if anybody uh, captured the shooting. And so that's when I started investigating for myself. I was like, how many shooters are there? How many people right. are actually injured? Is there two shooters? Something like that. Yeah, because the numbers, that's what was amazing about it, because I remember that, I think it was like a Sunday night, and, and I'm watching, and all of a sudden I see the breaking news come up, and you know, it started out to where everyone, including myself, thought it wasn't going to be too bad, I mean, it was bad, we knew it was bad, because at least one or two people had been were uh, were killed, and you know, several people were, were shot and injured, but it, for the first couple hours, it was like, it, it didn't sound as bad as what it, and then as the hours went on, it was like, Three people, yeah, four they people. Kept finding more and more victims yeah. As they walked the aisles. Right, the numbers kept going up, but it was kind of surprising because, I, you know, I thought all along that they should have had a more accurate picture of what was going on because I know the numbers increased as hours went on, but it was just, it was crazy. It was because the amount of people, I mean, 50, 58 people killed. That's just horrific. Yeah, fifty-eight people killed. Like what? Five hundred and twenty-seven shot. I know. It's it was it was just so shocking when. When this, when this, all the statistics started coming in and realizing, uh, you know, how many people were victims of this of this tragic event. Yeah, like all shootings are bad, but this is probably the worst one yeah. in U.S. history. Wor I mean, worst one. You had the Charleston Church shooting. You had the Columbine High School shooting. Yeah. But those weren't as bad as um, 22,000 22, people uh, almost having their life taken. 
Yeah, you, you, you. I saw I saw your evidence pictures, mm-hmm. and with all the ammo and guns that he had in that room, he could have possibly killed all twenty two thousand people. Yeah, I, I tell you, I know the amount of guns and the and the weaponry, and it's you know it's I mean it's very good that he only shot about what ten minutes or so. But uh, that's what's the strange part about it also. We're all very happy and glad that he stopped shooting, but the question is, why did he? Why did he? It was so odd. He stopped. I'm sure he stopped because there was a cop with us, and it said, you know, um, we're breaching the room and, and something like that. Mm-hmm. There was a cop with us. He was holding my arm up you know, and stuff. He said, uh, um, it was on the radio. It was like, you know, we made entry to the 32nd floor, and uh, uh, we're breaching room 135, 134. And so then it said breach, 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 and it blew up. And yeah. It said one suspect down, but you know, I'm pretty sure he he thought he knew all the cops coming, the cops were coming. So that's pretty pretty much why he took his life. I feel. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's likely. I guess it got to a point to where. He knew they were approaching, and he was going to try to, I guess, defend himself or something, and then maybe he just decided to commit suicide. I mean, who knows, yeah, I guess. It's either life in prison or is it a life without prison, you know? Yeah, and it's just odd that somebody that's, you know, so wealthy and didn't have a history, uh, any type of severe mental history, or, or seemed to get along, he seemed to get along with people and everything. just odd that somebody... Of the, like that, and especially as he's, you know, he's older. He's like what, sixty four, sixty five. It's just odd yeah, that I call, I call him Ghost because he, he, he and his brother um, weren't even that close. Like they were close, but they hang out like regular brothers. Would. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, yeah. Um, he, he had a Pakistanian wife. He gave her money to go uh, um, get a, a airplane and go move back to Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And she thought he was breaking up with her, but she little did she know he was more than a committed mass shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, really, really, really um, strange. I, I thought she went back to the Philippines, huh? Oh, Philippines. Philippines, that's yeah. What it was. No, yeah, I just wanted. To, no, yeah, no, I knew. Yeah, no, no, you. I, it's okay. I just wanted to be sure <laughs> that you didn't yeah, know like, something I don't know. Like the got me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. And um, well, I want to ask you too. Um, in the era where you were at the concert, it, of course, at the beginning. Uh, there's uh, somebody by the name of uh, Brianne. There was a Brianne and her mother, and uh, they they were at the concert and they heard somebody that looked like possibly a Hispanic lady that was yelling, saying that um, y'all all gonna die or something like that. Did you did you hear any of that or? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I'm pretty sure she was drunk because there was this one drunk Mexican lady sitting in a circle dancing. And so, like, I'm pretty sure that she was just extremely drunk. But mm-hmm. you know, I'm pretty sure she wasn't going to do anything. I heard it, but it wasn't next to me. Okay. I heard it all over screaming. It sounded like it was some sort of foreign accent saying, you're all going to die. I did you, did you, were, were, you weren't able to see the lady, though. Did you see what she looked like? No, I wasn't able to see the lady because I was on my okay. mom's shoulders. I got you. I got you, okay. Yeah, because I was just yeah, curious. You mentioned the screaming that, that popped up in my head, and I was like, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I was curious about that because, um, you know, that woman, well, it was that daughter and her mother, and they were there, and after they heard that, they actually took that warning serious, and they went back up to the hotel, and then after the shooting took place, about 45 minutes later, they went back down and were interviewed by numerous uh, news agencies, news channels, and but they ne- nobody ever came forward saying who the, the that woman that unidentified woman never came forward and I just thought it was odd and of course some people believed it was possibly Mary Lou Danley but for some odd reason she never came forward whoever that was we you know I mean it, it shouldn't really matter as long as she didn't commit the shooting but yeah like that during a mass sh- shooting would probably be a serious reason. Yeah, I mean, there, there may be no connection, uh, you know, I mean, I I thought, you know, it's always possible that she knew something and was trying to warn people, but it could just be one of those coincidences where, she, like you said, maybe she was drunk and and uh, and just was did, got in an argument with somebody and just wanted to vent out, who knows, you know. Yeah, because everybody was drinking, I mean, my mom was drinking, I saw everybody drinking, they had these fancy, nice glow-in-the-dark cups, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, I noticed that, a everybody, lot of people were... Everybody there was really nice. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of people were just, you know, relaxing, laid back, and drinking uh, some beers and stuff and having a good time. Did you see anything else un- unusual that night that you want to talk about? Or? Um, I, I don't know if uh, uh, this was a shooter or not, but on top of the concert stage, mm-hmm. there was somebody with a gun. 
but I thought it was a police sniper because I didn't see anybody. Hmm. Uh, um, I didn't see anybody up there shooting, but I thought it was a police sniper looking for the shooter. Yeah, that's quite interesting. It, um, and this is how long? How did long? When did you see that? About how long after the concert started? To um, I mean, after you right heard? Right when I got shot, right because I got shot right in front of the concert stage. I was, I, I had front row seats to the concert stage. Okay. And that's when uh, everybody behind us started running. And then uh, when I got shot after I started running, I was, uh, um, my mom rolled me over, and as soon as she rolled me over, the first thing I looked at was some dude on top of the, the stage with a gun and moving it around. But um, I didn't see any muzzle flash. I didn't see any recoil reaction or none of that. And so I just thought it was a police uh, um, sniper trying to look for the shooter. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, because you were shot during the second round, right? After the second. You said the yeah. second. Yeah. That's interesting. The first, the first round is when people started running, and then we just thought it was firecrackers. And then when we saw a whole horde of people running, that's when we, when we they got serious, and then as soon as I started running, I got shot in the shoulder. Yeah, that's interesting you say that, though, because I remember there's one video that I saw, and I have it up, I'll have to look at it again, uh, where it looks like somebody walking on the top part of that stage that has a gun, and, and they're in, like, black clothing. I remember I remember seeing that. Yeah, but I, I just thought it was a SWAT sniper. I mean, it could right. have been a second shooter, but they haven't said anything about somebody being on top of the stage. Right. Yeah, that is... Very, Shooter, that I, is. I just thought it was a police sniper. Right. Yeah, it would make sense that they're setting up to try to take this person out. Did uh, did he have a a, a, long, a wrong rifle or just a handgun or what? Can you remember? He, he had a long rifle. Um, it, it looked like a sniper scope, so that's why I thought it was a police sniper because it had a pretty good looking sniper scope. Yeah, that's interesting because that's exactly what I saw in that video. It was a. He had yeah. black clothing and it was like yeah, like a sniper type rifle or something. Hmm. But so, I mean, SWAT wears black clothing, so that's why I thought it was a um, SWAT sniper. Right, right. Well, I appreciate you taking your time for this interview. It's quite interesting. Um, and uh, and tell your mom thanks, too. And I'll put this up on YouTube. You know, it's it's some in interesting information that you, you know, and I'm glad that you made it safe. And you're, you're so, for the most part, you're recovering okay, huh? Yeah, I have two more weeks and then I'm out of the cast. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm really glad that you, you survived. And you're very fortunate, uh, you know, man above was looking out for you because, uh, you know, you, you saw that woman that was shot in the face and, you know, it could have been a different situation, but thank, thank yeah, God. It was gruesome. It, like, that bullet could have hit my face. It was yeah. right, it, it, she was literally not three feet away from me. She was running right next to my mom. And then my, I, my mom saw it too. Her, like, half her face was just blown off by a bullet. Wow. That's terrible, and I'm sure, obviously, she probably lost her life. Obviously, probably instantly, I'm sure. instantly, I'm probably, sure. yeah, probably instantly, because uh, you know it's 58 people that lost their lives. So, it was. I'm glad you made it out okay, and t you take care of yourself, and um, and yeah, thanks for your story. I really appreciate it, man. All right, thanks, Charles. I appreciate it. All right, you take care of yourself.